even know how to add her because this is my first time to have a guest. There she is. Is she not the best thing in the whole world ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever? <laughs> Thank you, Mom. So there she is, sweet Brittany. Oh. Um, so this is Brittany. And Brittany has had quite the struggle. But I don't even like to talk about the struggle piece. First of all, I hate calling it mental illness. Can we come up with another word? Um, like, um, I don't want to say MS either because that's a bad diagnosis. Um, challenges. She had challenges. MI. We'll call it MI. Yes. Um, MI. Mental illness just sounds so like dreadful and one flew over the cuckoo's nest like i think of jack nicholson if you know that movie if you're that old to know that movie um but that's what i think of when i think of mental illness like oh life is over and it's not over like you can live a good life you don't have it doesn't have to be done and, and doom and as parents the reason we started this channel is be yes, Melissa J, thank you. It is a classic movie for us old people. And you're young, I'm, so, I'm old. Um, but for a long time, it felt like gloom and doom. Or, <laughs> but um, Brittany, I'm kind of gonna ask her questions and, and she'll probably ask me questions to kind of tell you guys. Um, and Mandy, yes, it's very brave for her to speak up because it is important. And what I have found, and it's in, not just generally speaking, it, even in our own family, our own friends, they don't want to talk about it. So they hide it under the rug until it comes out to be a major explosion. Um, we had kind of an explosion, but how much of an explosion can you have at eight? It's when you're 12, 16, 30s that it, you know it can then become legal problems and, and so our agenda is to talk to parents and say hey it's okay that you have the issue with your child do let's do something about it so that you don't end up in a bad place and that's what we want to do mm -hmm. I, and i'm so proud of Brittany to be brave to talk about it so Brittany, do you want to tell us a little bit a bit about yourself sure I'm Brittany. I am 26, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, I have two dogs and a cat. They are my world. They are freaking adorable. By the way, if you ever get to an adoptive pit bull, you're welcome, because they are the best in the whole wide world. My dog has got me through some of the hardest times in my entire life. I've had two of those that have really just went above and beyond and they're both the reason that i'm alive today i i really do believe that um i have type 1 diabetes fun stuff um i love to joke around i love romantic comedies and post-period dramas pride and prejudice <laughs> is my other half i love mr darcy um that's all i can think about right now <laughs> oh i love to read i love to read and i love to write and i love to take pictures and they really get me out of my comfort zone i was in the yearbook committee in high school um that was awesome so yeah so um of course, you know, I'm extremely biased because I think she's like the most amazing thing in the world. <laughs> um, so Brittany and I have this like love of true crime and I see my true crime people mm. are in here, which makes me very, very, very happy. Um, I got Melissa Jade, I have Andy C and I have Patty and I am so glad you came and my sister is here. Um, and actually every one of you love true crime. Um, so Brittany and I have actually been doing some recent uh, visits. Um, when I say visits, I mean we've like gone on some uh, excursions and gone to places. And two weeks ago, we went to Plymouth, Indiana, which is about four and a half hours from us to um, pay our respects to baby um, Mercedes. 
and baby Mercedes had never had um, because her parents unfortunately were on drugs. So another example of, I pray to God, if, if we can touch one family um, so that their, their, the next generation doesn't have to go through, like example, baby Mercedes went through. Uh, we went to her vigil, we were on Molly Go Lightly and we went live from Molly Go Lightly's channel. Um, and that was Brittany's first time um, being on live, except we did do Facebook live to Delphi. Which yeah, was, we also went on somebody's channel. I don't remember who that was. I was on there. You make it sound like um, <laughs> uh, channel hoppers, right, Melissa? We're channel <laughs> <laughs> that was an inside joke for the true crime people. Um, but no, actually, we take it very seriously, and we we're very, very um, honored that we were asked that we were allowed to go on those channels and they were okay with that. Um, and we're blessed to have every one of you in our chat tonight. And we really pray to get the word out so that we can touch people. And you don't have to come here if you have a family member with mental illness. You can come here because we, as a parent, people were not um, so great about They did not want to be bothered, I guess, sometimes with um, a child, when you had a child with mental illness, like they were cool with hanging out with us, but like I, I couldn't be like, hey, can you watch my kids so I can go do this or whatever, because they didn't understand it. So it's really good to be out to just give a voice for um, the families and to educate the public um, that, you know, they're not going to hurt you, <laughs> you know, and there's treatment. And just like if you have a broken arm, like you just go get a cast and mental illness is, um, yes, Melissa J, you, Melissa J just said, my mom didn't believe in mental illness. Oh, dear God. Did we have people in our own family? <laughs> Brittany's <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, Brittany, do you remember? Okay, wait, I have to tell this story. I'm so scared. Car with her, um, a family member. Um, and the family member said, um, Brittany, I, I don't want to have a diagnosis. Let me, you know, let's hold on to that story until we go a little bit further. Okay. <laughs> so, Brittany, are you comfortable telling these lovely people? Um, what you're, well, first of all, let's talk about what your diagnosis, do you remember what your diagnosis was before you were 18? I remember they had diagnosed me with depression and anxiety and yep. borderline traits. Yep. And what, um, you were diagnosed with back then, um, was major depression with psychosis because she had some um, psycho psychosis at times um, and then borderline personality traits which it, when you get if you have borderline personality disorder it's a really tough road um, but we were lucky enough Brittany was uh, diagnosed when or that those traits were noticed when she was about 14 uh, she was in a residential facility. Um, we were able to work on those, and she does not have personality disorder. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for that. So um, they were trained at the time, and that was a concern. So a very big concern because if you borderline person, if you know anybody with it, it is a it's a very hard road to go on. Um, and so we were blessed that. So now Brittany, do you want to tell everybody what you are now diagnosed with? Uh, yes, I am diagnosed with bipolar disorder, PTSD. Um, I have some separation anxiety and I have type one diabetes. Yes. 
I got some heart stuff in there somewhere too, but we don't need to go that far. <laughs> oh, so you got some heart <laughs> So yes, so we have quite a lot for a young a young lady. Yes. I do. Uh, when you put them all together, sometimes Melissa J, I I feel for your dad, and I you because BPD is not a easy thing to handle. Um, boy, Brittany has a really good friend with uh, BPD, and I love her dearly. And we, um, I know she was a little girl, and I love her. Um, and she really has a hard time, and it's hard. It's well, you know, to to handle BPD. I worked in psych. Um, obviously, I'm a nurse, so we work with it. They, oh no, I'm a medical nurse. I'm not working in psych. Um, but BPD very very hard. Um, mm -hmm. And I um, am blessed that she was able to work that out. But I'm sorry to interrupt. You know me and my my mouth. I just keep going. Okay, <laughs> okay, you're forgiven. <laughs> so, um, how was that when? They the bipolar stigma diagnosis on you. Do you remember how you felt? I was actually relieved to finally know what was wrong with me because I would have these outbursts and feelings that were so extreme that, you know, not knowing what's causing that can really cause another mental like I'm fighting myself because I don't mean to be this way and I know I'm that's not who I am as a human being but then you know I would lash out and I would have outbursts and I would get frustrated and angry and feel so much guilt and frustration but when I got that diagnosis it started to make sense and now that I know what's wrong, I can do steps to fix those behaviors. Yeah. Before it was like, I don't know what's wrong, so what do I do to fix it? I can try everything in the world, but I just gotta hope something sticks, you know? So you were just glad to have that diagnosed, like to say, oh, well now it's happening. Mm -hmm. And Mandy, you're right. The diagnosis does not define your character. It does not. Amen to her. It does not diagnose character. As the parent, we feel like we failed um, when you have a child that has, is suffering from. Well, you, we didn't know what it was. We thought it was behavior issues at first, obviously. Um, and we were the first ones to go through, as anybody I knew. So you know, guilty and you did something wrong. And I just kept thinking, oh, I ate wrong during pregnancy. I remember having a uh, soda and I wasn't supposed to have caffeine. So <laughs> stupid stuff like that, where that are stigma that we have. Um, plus I was divorced and um, that did made it really hard too, because Brittany was going between two homes um, and then we, you know, sometimes we wouldn't agree on events or, or such. So there's a lot that I regret that I wish I could go back and, and make it all better, you know, um, to make it a little easier for her. Um, but you can't go back and it changes who we are. So, Brit, um, do you remember, first of all, I was going to ask you, what your, um, some of your emotional triggers are, um, but. Emotional trigger is like anything that, uh, like that, like a like a memory, experience, or um, an event that sparks an intense like emotion or reaction that will um, change your current mood. Yes, I've got lots of those. <laughs> I might yeah. be one. Of <laughs> my biggest one is I hate when I have a day planned or I have a schedule I've come up with and something happens that causes a change. That just happened earlier where something we had 
planned, it got messed up, and I've had anxiety ever since. Um, I hate the word no. I hate when you tell me no. I hate it. I hate it. I That is the worst word I think is out there on the planet. No, 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 no. Telling me when I'm wrong. I hate when people tell me I'm wrong, especially when I'm right. <laughs> A lot of people like to do that and argue with you. And you're like, I know I'm right. I've been doing this a long time, especially with my diabetes. They like to argue about that one. Um, I hate when I'm not allowed to do things by myself. I'm one of those people who, you know, I'll move my own mountain. I will cross my own bridges. I will lift everything I got to do. I want to power through it by myself. So I hate when people, you know, ask me to help me all the time or, you know, won't let me do something. Like I'm a grown person, I, I, can, I can do it, you know? Um, and um, I really have a hard time having to take my medications daily at the same time every day, which means I have to be up, I have to eat something, I have to drink some water, you know, I have to do these things. Otherwise, it puts my health at risk, including my insulin. I hate that I have to do that every day. And after so long of doing it, every so often, I just have these huge outbursts because I'm just so exhausted from having to do it all day, all the time. It never stops. What do those outbursts look like? Can you explain to them? Well, maybe we should explain what they feel like to you on the inside, and I'll kind of explain what they look like on the outside. So it feels very, very intense. You can feel it rising up in your body. You feel hot. It feels like, you know, when you have your tea on your little teapot on the stove. And it starts just a little bit of steam, and then it just boils, 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 boils like that. And if you don't catch it fast enough and it's too high, it's just going to boil over. Yeah. That's what it feels like. You, I feel it in my stomach, is in my chest. It will tighten up in my chest. My stomach will feel like, you know, when you get the butterflies, when you go on a first date with somebody and you're really, really giddy and excited but it's like the bad version of butterflies. It's like an intense anxiety riddled and just anxious and it's just pushing and pushing and tightening and tightening, you know, until it makes you feel like you're gonna get sick. I feel nauseous usually when I get up like that. It's zero to 100 like that. Um, and yeah, you know, I don't always have time to intervene myself to try to get myself like, hey, take a step back. It's not that serious. Um, like it hurts my jaw physically. I because they clench it so tight. I've actually ruined my tooth where I grinded my tooth into dust from <laughs> something that happened and completely ruined my tooth. Um just from intense emotions. I mean it's intense. It's strong. Right. Okay. So I just looked at Melissa Jade's comment and she said, it seems like we all experience those emotions and she's right. Um, it, it's simply intensified for us, for you maybe. And I think we definitely all experience those emotions. Um, I think that's definitely true I think that you just have a harder time. Um, yes. Let me think. This was to, let's see, this would have probably been before we went on a trip to um, Myrtle Beach. It was just you and I going on our trip. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what story I'm about to tell? Is it the soda story? Yes. So it was like a couple of days before, and we'd gone to the grocery store. was agitated. I don't know what flew her off chain but she went off the chain and, <laughs> and she's like um we had gone to big dog get a soda can. Ugh. Ugh. and something really pissed her off 
I hope I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. I mean, it is my channel, so I assume I am. And I'm not mom. I don't know. Can someone on my YouTube tell me? Am I allowed to say pissed? I don't know what my... Are there any words on Can someone you tell me what I'm allowed to say on my own channel? I am. Sometimes I, I have a potty mouth. But hey, oh my gosh, I didn't even see Lola here. And Hi, y'all. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to talk about Brittany's issue one of her tantrums. So it was not something that was a big deal. It was something about, she, she wanted me to have a, um, she wanted something for a trip because we we're going to Myrtle Beach in a couple of days. But you think she'd be happy, like her mom's taking her. So, but no. Her Coke, her Coke, which was full and was a large Coke from Don's, and she takes it and she flings it up over my SUV. And I was like, Her? and I think you jumped out of the car. Probably. And I was like, oh, I was, I started, I took off. Chase, that's one of my BFFs. Hi, Chase. I was just a little girl. Um, so here, yes, sis, I have mouth. Okay, so I like, got, I, whatever she talked about, I don't remember. But, um, I, so I put on a break and I was like, man, I really like to take off right now. <laughs> I was so pissed. There's all of all over my car. So, um, she gets in the car, I'm like, um, uh, diabetes going on. So here's Brittany getting in the car, and I'm like, and she, I was like, no, no, not. So that, now we got a, of the, you know, a power, <laughs> which, you know, happened a lot with us back then. Now, not, but she was lit. Grandma, come and get me. <laughs> so, my mom, like, I think lock your door. To I remember that. I was like, shit, like, Brittany must really be mad. Her blood sugar was as it came down she's like mommy i'm so sorry i'm so sorry that's what happens so you add in uh, her brain doesn't come down like yours and mine and she's over the like i could be really pissed but i'm not poking your car i'm not going to jump out i'm not going to call their mother and tell them to come get I'm not going to be so upset Mom's like, better lock your door. And that is kind of what I was saying. You're right. You do have those emotions. It's that reaction that she can which we're going to get to on how we learn to do that. But okay. So now we got how, what it looks like. We have lots and lots, lots of things. Yes, we do. But Brittany, tell them what it feels like when you you come down and you're like you realize what that's the worst i when i come down and realize what has happened i the amount of guilt is so strong and physically painful it physically hurts i mean i feel that emotion i feel guilt as an emotion very deeply you know, I'm all about people. I'm a people person. I love people. You know, I want to give. I would give anything to anyone if they needed it. You know, I've had friends stick around who shouldn't have been in my life because I just didn't want them to suffer. And, you know, but when you do something like that, not being, not, you know, not, that's not who I am. And when I realized that, it 
the guilt, it's so strong. I can feel it start in my chest and I can feel it go up into my throat. And it, you, I'm trying not to cry. I can, I can feel it very deeply and I hate it. I hate it. It's the worst. I, I would rather, I don't know. I would rather have a lot more things wrong than have to deal with the guilt afterwards. It's painful. I, I watch the way you look afterwards and you're like, you can see that change. The, oh, mom, I'm so sorry. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. And, and it, you, it's not fake. It is true. And then in your, it's totally other way. And it's so sad. That's your kid. You just watch them go from normal to escalated to grief. In a matter of five minutes, you know, um, those, are really tough. those are really tough times, but those are better times to have the five minute episodes than the, the, the 24 hour episodes where. Mm or you know because you've had days that you don't is she you want to kind of tell them about that looks like your sleep sky your um sure oh hold on a second mandy said it's going in and out mandy are we still going in and out and if you guys can chat because you know if i Mandy. Now yeah, you're going in and out. Well, shit. <laughs> um, yep, I just and stuff though. I'm pretty. Sure. I have an idea that might help. Okay. I'm gonna disconnect from the Wi-Fi right here. That might help a little bit. Give it a couple seconds. Okay. And then you all can tell me if you're, you can hear me or not. Yay, can you all hear me now? Am I still cutting in or out? Sound better on my end. Okay. Okay, Mandy, Patty, actually Patty's like almost a neighbor. Like we met on um, a chat, um, on Natasha's chat and she lives in Central over it. She lives over by our old carriage. Holy crap. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. <laughs> Might even know her. I know Patty and I are always like, we're going to do lunch one day. Like we really should. Now if we're, we're talking about, oh, your rapid cycle. I, I was, um, if you could kind of tell everybody um, what it's like, because you have these, which was really bad when was in school because she had to be somewhere. Um, but kind of tell them what your sleep schedule looks like. It is not pretty and it is not normal. And it is just, it needs some work. <laughs> um, I've been on every sleeping medication I can think of. Um, that's like not a narcotic that I shouldn't be taking. And it, I just, I don't sleep. And then I sleep for a really, really long time. I think the longest I slept was 72 hours. I yeah. woke up with dried gum in my mouth from how long I slept after, I think it was after Thanksgiving actually. And I've had nights where I ha didn't sleep for four or five days and I, you know, I had some hallucinations. Yeah. Um, 
psych as well as not sleeping hallucinations. When I don't sleep, I tend to actually see smoke. I get really freaked out and paranoid and I see smoke, which is very strange. Um, but yeah, I my sleeping is all over the place. I will go, you know, where I don't, for a few days, I'm not going to bed until 5 a.m. And then all of a sudden I will sleep for 24 hours and then I'm up for two days. And then I go to sleep for 12 hours and then I'm back up for another day. And it is all over the place. It is very exhausting, but I'm really good at it. I'm <laughs> really good at it. Well, it makes it difficult um, living with you. Uh, not that you live here. You're here like usually two nights a week. Um, but you have a very hard time um, sleeping. You always have, mm -hmm. which the school years are this. So let's yes. school years. So, <laughs> oh, God. One. so, okay. Let me just tell you high school. We got Brady in, um, in this program at school. Thank God. Um, so she was really smart. So it wasn't like, you know how they have um, learning discipline classes when we were growing up? Um, they, now she went through, had it for uh, kids that struggled with um, behavior stuff going on. and it was an amazing program that they had at her school um and patty she went to the center of, you know you're in Wayne, though aren't you she's from way i think she's from ways well she knew she up. well when bo was here um Brittany just thought i'd throw that out there um <laughs> that's another that's my all over the place. um anyway so um psychologists that would be in this classroom which is crazy she went to kind of an uppity school and i call this guy in the morning because Brit okay this is Brittany wouldn't get out of bed she usually didn't sleep until like usually four or five in the morning so when i would go in there at six or seven she was like oh hell no i'm not getting up and so or her father saying the same thing. We would really have to lift her up. And she still wouldn't wake up. And she was pathetic. So we would take our fingers on her feet, trying to get her kid just wouldn't get up. I had never seen anything like it. It, it drove us insane. <laughs> we ran. So the psychologist had us call him in the mornings for ask for him to say, okay, put her on put her on the phone. So I started talking to her and then she would like at least uh, grunt and maybe she'd still come to school. Maybe she wouldn't. And it was a hit show. High school was the worst thing in the whole world. It turned bad because Brittany got sick with her, di her diabetes ups affected her and that's another of the live, but um, I do or do you? <laughs> You're cutting out again, Mama. Okay, I'll I'll slow it down. Turn off your on the internet as well. Is that better, y'all? better okay so um anyway the, i don't know if you want to talk about that whether we would not do that tonight talk about school the cardiovascular thing that happened during school oh we can talk about that another time that needs a whole segment by itself <laughs> yeah so we'll talk about that. okay so what were the ever the everyday challenges? What did they look like for you? Um, then and then now. So I still struggle with this today, which is healthy communications. 
I am really, really bad at it. I way better than I used to be, which is saying something. Um, you know, it's hard for me to get my point across of what exactly I'm trying to say when, especially when I'm in crisis. Yes. Um, staying on track, you know, with things I need to get done, especially because I have trouble getting up in, in the morning. So, you know, when I finally do get up, things aren't always open, especially during this whole COVID thing. You know, I would go to the store at like midnight, <laughs> you know, um, sleeping too much, but never feeling like I get enough sleep. Um, that was a really, that's still a really big struggle that even when I'm sleeping for long periods of time or any time at all, I'm still exhausted. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm going through it, when I'm having a depressive episode, I taking a shower is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I mean, to get physically out of bed and walk to use the restroom is already exhausting. And having to walk back to the bed, you know, sometimes I don't even want to take a shower and that gets gross. Yeah. yeah, but that's a normal part, you know, some time of depression. Um, but then on the opposite spectrum, when I'm in a manic episode, I wash too much. And then my skin is dry and flaky and my hair gets weak gross because it's just like hard you know and that's even worse on the other side um those are my big ones you know cleaning can be a really big struggle when i'm in a depressive episode and cleaning myself to exhaustion is a problem in a manic episode so i will literally clean until i'm falling on the floor and i can't move anymore have you seen that room Yes, but I haven't had a manic episode in a while. Right, that would be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brittany, I have a really, really sick sense of humor. Um, I've done that on the live because, you know, we're just being on here. But, oh, we have a sick sense of humor. And that happens when you uh, go through all of these different things that we've gone through. So, yeah. Um, um, Oh Chase came and went to North school with me. So she definitely has a sick number. But yeah, we definitely, one thing that Brittany wouldn't you say that we did um, find our refuge in humor. A yeah. sick number. Like, it scares some people. It does. It does. But that's how we dealt with it. Like, that's how we got through with it. Like, be. Oh God! Hmm. Thing, we have to be careful what we say because we we don't realize that um, normal people would be like, "Whoa!" It is. <laughs> that's how you have to be about that. Mm -hmm. Ours, and we love to laugh. We love. Me being in last night. That was pretty freaking funny. My I should probably be champion anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why probably not. I had trouble sleeping too, but I'm not sure ambient is uh, a real good choice for me anymore. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> you guys would have loved it. <laughs> it's better than the Kardashians. Thanks, Brett. It's wonderful. <laughs> But it was pretty bad. You just don't remember it. Has anybody else ever taken Ambien? Because I she I she started saying, Oh yeah, I do remember that. Like, oh mom go. Oh, my mom is in chat. Everybody say hi to my mom. Yeah. The old woman. Oh, here's a story. So Brittany asked one thing that I have was Florida. We live in Ohio, so she wasn't here. Episodes, my mom would come up like Brittany wasn't patient. She would come up and like help me, right? So 
Brittany gets mad. And mom, Patty in chat lives in Waynesville. My mom's from Waynesville. So actually my whole family's from Waynesville. And my face is seeing somebody from Waynesville. What is it that you guys are all in here? But it's <laughs> so um Brittany having an episode and she's going to town screaming and carrying on. And my mom calm down. She's like Brittany goes, shut up. <laughs> To my mom to this day um and so that is poor the, grandma yeah my poor mother <laughs> that's okay she enjoys it i think I, well she is a nurse she's now she's a old woman. Okay. So, um, other so, um, Brittany has this. Remember, she's diabetic, so she is sleeping, staying up all these hours, sleeping up to seventy-two hours. She's diabetic. She's not supposed to be doing. She, so she'll have these crashes, these blood sugar, and she'll be like, you know, her blood sugar is free which is like very 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 dangerous uh, and we i can laugh today because it hasn't happened today but i'll hear um um my boyfriend's in chat so i'm not sure if he um how how what do you say to mike at two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning usually it's just a pound to the chest oh okay that makes sense for you you know abuse i'm just kidding <laughs> So, he is not very easy to wake up. So a nice good old pound to the chest wakes him right up every time. Or the cat, because the cat knows when my blood sugar is low and she scratched him in the face before and peed on him one time when my blood sugar was low. That's the craziest thing. Like they have diabetic dogs that can that can smell like high blood sugars, low blood sugars, but Brittany's cat can tell when her blood sugar is low. It wakes her up. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Cat obviously is not trained, <laughs> but her cat will wake her up when her blood sugar is low. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. Brittany's really good with animals. Um, that's one thing. And with with kids back in the day when she was growing up, <laughs> but she did. Uh, she does now. She does. She's a totally different woman. I'm so proud of her. Look at that beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. Okay. So now we are your, your habits and we're still working on that. We're still working on communication issues. Okay. So there are things, unfortunately, with mental illness in our, in, and in our system where you have to get um, first responders involved. Yes. Um, that happened a lot when she was younger. Um, I remember several times. Well, fortunately, the police department got to know us pretty well because we would get um, in situations where we did have to call the police um, because I didn't her blood, couldn't tell if it was her blood sugar or mental illness, and so she wouldn't get close enough to her to check her blood sugar. And she would be very, I'd be like, what do I do? Um, and she'd be throwing things across the room and there, I, mom, there was nothing I could do. Like I, my hands were tied at that point. Um, I took, one time my mom was in town again, she lived in another state, she lived in Florida. So she had flew in and, um, Don't you dare. So, oh, yeah, if you could hit the thumbs up, subscribe, that would be awesome, y'all. Um, so, bring, um, now let me say, this is during uh, years. This is not now. No. This is 
been through so much treatment, but so is going to just treatment and carrying on. And um, mm -hmm. my mom, Brittany, and Brittany goes, <laughs> oh, shit, the devil in there. Like, <gasps> area. We really, like, oh, <laughs> my God. I don't know about chat, but it's, we will never forget that. That was, like, we always she would like her other person would come out, but that was scary. Like it, <laughs> holy, oh my god! Brittany Mike you, loves that story. <laughs> do you remember it? You yes. Mean, do you, Do you remember saying that? Yes, I do. Oh my gosh, that was some crazy shiznit. Let me just tell you, it's pretty hilarious to think back on now, though. Yeah, but so out of control. And but people, you don't want to call the police on your kid. Um, so we had to, oh yeah oh. So one time I, w I had dated this guy, and Brittany never wanted me to ever date. Oh, she, but she loved her dad in a relationship, but I was never allowed to date anyone. Mm -mm. So Why I not? I had had a back procedure, and a guy that I used to date. We weren't even dating at the time. He said, I'll help you um, go to the store because like, he knew I couldn't lift the groceries. So he goes to the store with us. Brittany says, Mom, I'll be right back. And so finally, I was like really worried. I was like, I'll go up to the front desk and have her paged. So I go up to the front desk and I was like, can you page my daughter? I'm like, I can't find her. And they're like, what's her name? I was like, her name is Brittany. They're like, is that her? And I said, yes. They're like, oh man, we just called the police department. Because Ranger followed her. What the? What? No, she said that she was afraid of the guy that was with us. The guy with <laughs> had been my ex-boyfriend. Like she'd known him for years. Just to want him to be there with us at the at the door. So she decided it would be a great idea to so that we shouldn't have to be. To just call the police and tell them that she was afraid. He was like, he was a uh, stranger. Do you remember that, Brittany? I do remember that. And I was super, super paranoid that day. I don't know if I didn't sleep or something happened, but I was super paranoid. And I felt really, really uncomfortable. And I just wanted him to go. I just wanted him to leave. So I called the police and told him I didn't know who he was because now he was trying to hurt me because I was just, I felt real weird about it. So what does he get at the Kroger's? But anyway, so the officer goes up to Kroger on lip. I had just had my back procedure. A teenager, Brittany was like 12 at the time. Well, I guess you I could have taken him down easily. <laughs> so here comes the police officer. When he shows up, he comes in because, again, they knew her because of all of the other issues that she's had with the high blood sugars and stuff. He, well, he comes in here. He goes, "Ah, oh, Brittany, what?" <laughs> he told her, "If you ever do anything like this again, you're the one going to be charged for inducing panic." She never did anything like that again, ever, ever, ever. But that's the stuff that that her brain doesn't look working like yours and mine. Like I never would have thought it ever calling the police unless there was like a dire emergency and i still like would probably been like well is it really that big of an emergency that i would ever have to call the police i don't know i never called the police that i can remember as a child um we didn't have 911 but never ever and but here Brittany's like yeah you know i think i'll get i want to get uh, i'll call him joe um i want to get rid of joe so I'll just call the police and have them just, you know, stop. So how did you think at home, by the way? The police had, officer. The police officer. Oh, dear God. Sir, can you uh, grab our <laughs> You're a hoot. Okay. So, um, what, so now that we...
what the hell do we do about it, right? So, um, right. Okay. So the thing um, that that we first, pretty what? Do what? Mom said everybody wants to leave. <laughs> You're I can watch to leave. Okay. So um what do we do? What's what would you say like the number one thing if somebody is in true if your child let's let's walk. I'm your kid and I am going through crisis mode. Say I'm coming home from after a inpatient stay. And I am not stable. What would you say the number one need is at that moment? What would you say that need is? Understanding. Understanding. Okay. That's important. What know that, was- that those outbursts are not because no, go they ahead. hate you. They're not because they want to act out or be crazy or act whatever, act a fool. It's because something is wrong. And we need help. It's not what it, the inpatient stay, you know, is there can be very important. You know, that's to get you through that first hump. And then as soon as you get home, you need your support system immediately come around, give you what you're looking for. Do you need somebody to listen? Do you need somebody to hug you? Do you need somebody to just sh- shut up and leave you alone? but still be there for you. You know, you, you, you need your support. That is the most important besides your medications. Of course, you need to keep those. If you're on those, those are very important. But I think your support system is the biggest backbone. Right. What about a safety plan? Tell us what that is. So a safety plan is, you know, send a plan that you put together usually with your therapist or your doctor that your family signs as well as you and your therapist to have steps in place if there is crisis whether that be you know just something emotional going on or if something's dangerous like suicidal or homicidal thoughts or plants you have this plan in place that everyone follows that is going to keep everyone safe, both the person who is sick as well as the family and the other people in the home. And, you know, just to get you through to the other side. And sometimes, you know, there's, you go through the steps until the crisis can be averted. Usually that starts with something small all the way down to hospitalization. So it's just emergency planning. And you go through each step until you get through your crisis. If you, you might get done early sometimes and not have to go to the hospital. And other times you might have to go to the hospital and that's okay too. But that plan protects everybody and makes sure that nobody is harmed. Right. you were pretty lucky that you had a um, a family that was about treatment. Mm-hmm. Not everybody that are, are um, also foster children. Um, but, you know, so that really blessed that you had that. Yes. Um, what is something mm. that you, I could have currently that would you um that we are worried, witness for other parents that are going through it sorry that my dog is like going crazy i think he wants to go outside it's okay um, but i think the biggest thing was knowing that sometimes you can't help me ah sometimes i just need you to sit down shut up and listen to what i have to say you yeah. know a lot of people just want to fix 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 it when the biggest fix of all is just shut up and listen. 
they're telling you what they need, whether they're verbally saying it or not. Right. You know, there's cues that let you know, like, hey, back off. Leave me alone. Go away. Let me sit here in a room by myself. And just sometimes I need to be alone. You know, I think that was the biggest one for you and other family members that just wanted to fix it. And I just needed you to listen. Yeah, we fixed it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. we always wanted to make that, that better. What is something that you wish you would like? I wish I wouldn't have lied so much about how I was actually feeling. You know, I would tell everybody I was fine when clearly I was not okay. And that would lead to bigger outbursts because I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'd say to myself too, when I was not okay, I was not fine. I needed something and I wouldn't allow myself to get it because I'm fine. I'm fine. Right. Why did you feel you were fine? I, and I, weirdly enough, as codependent as I am, I was also like to be very independent. And one, I didn't want to deal with what was ever was going on because that's just exhausting. And two, you know, I didn't want people to worry. And I could handle it by myself. At least that's what I thought. It's not something you can handle by yourself. Right. So let's talk about discipline. Ooh. Boy, that's you have a child um, with any parent. Then you illness. remember, oh, I don't know how many people said, you just need, you just need good stuff. And, um, That You're has, cutting out, Mama. Okay, I'm going to slow down. I'll slow it down. Did I get it caught up? Sounds better. Nope, never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> I lied. We were talking about lying. I figured I'd just lie about it. Oh, great. Great idea. So, um, now I forgot what I was talking about because we were, we went to another discipline. Discipline. Yes. It's a big topic. So like, oh, you just need a good spin. And that's all she needs. Bear the right, bear the child. Honey, if you've ever had to The worst thing is to escalate. Trying to, you can't spank mental illness out of a child. Um, they need you to bring them down. Um, I used to get angry. I mean, of course, I was human, um, and so I would yell sometimes. Don't get me wrong; I was no saint. I, but I. I could at the time. I really tried. So all I wanted to do was make you better. You remember that? Mm -hmm. I wanted to do was I, that was my only wish. I was like, I wanted you to be okay. And I, all I ever wanted for you, you just, for you to be okay. And, um, we had done therapy. So that's kind of, you know, we did medication. Hallelujah. Medication. I know that a lot of you are against, people are against medication, but for us, it was the best thing for mm -hmm. us. Well, it takes a long time to get the right. And that's another thing. A lot of people will try medication and they try one or two medications to work. So they say, oh, meds don't work for me. And, um, you have to get time. So, and sometimes that means a lot of the patient is so bad your child is um and and adults that struggle um they can do medication changes for a nursing staff and they have a, um you know therapist there 
they have your psychiatrist as well that are prescribing the medications and they can monitor what side effects those. Brittany had a lot of side effects from medication. Mm -hmm. Remember Brittany had the tick and you'd be like, like that all the I time? I still sometimes have it. It's permanent. I'm just really good at hiding it now. Now I, I, I just did just a few minutes ago. I just now tighten my jaw and tighten my neck. Did you? I didn't even, I don't even notice it anymore. But uh, so, okay. So that was a, a big thing was the whole, um, bear the rods by the child. I heard that from so many people because we used to go to church a lot with Brittany's dad and I. Yes, I used to be a, a holy roller at one time. People never believed me, but yes, I really did. So anyway, um, and we still have faith and I still believe in Jesus and, but I also believe in a lot of other things. I believe in um, God, obviously God, but law of attraction. I wish I would have known about law when I was going through this with my daughter. Um, we went through regular therapy, Brittany, from day one. Mm -hmm. Crisis, which we'll do another live on what I say. Um, but we start therapy immediately. Her um, Agarwal, right away, she was a lifesaver for me. Was she a lifesaver for you? Or do you, did you not like her? Um, I did, but I had a very strained relationship. Um, I had a lot of mixed feelings. I honestly prefer my doctor now. I think we're more compatible. Oh, she's awesome. Everybody loves Ashley. Or you're talking about your therapist. Oh, I'm my therapist too, but I'm talking about specifically my doctor. Okay. I have the best therapist in the world. She's perfect. <laughs> so start what's called a CBT or um, it's regular that you go to every day if you want to go to therapy. Um, cognitive therapy. So we do that. We do that. We're still having episodes. She's still having um, thoughts of her harming. Is that okay that I say that? Harming myself, yes. Sorry, I didn't even think to even, I said it before. Okay. So, um, so we're still happening. And she's young. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what are we therapy, something, medication. Well, I shouldn't say not working. She just would still have the episodes. So I thought, oh, well, she's medicated. She goes to therapy. This is like going to end, right? Like, that's the end of it. Like, like on June 1st, you know, like expecting her to be in date to this. Cause I don't know yet. I'm not, I'm not a nurse. I, and I'm asking doc, the doctor, what is my child's life going to look like? Is she going to live? In? That's what occurring for her. It was terrifying because I always, you dream of your kid getting married, walking down the aisle, being a doctor or a lawyer, being a mother, you know, I didn't know how her life was going to be. Then at that point, I just wanted her to live. Like, God, just let her get her, let's just let her live, okay? So we go to, uh, I don't know if we're, um, but we went to um, their partial program. So we live in Dayton, which is about an hour from Cincinnati, from the hospital. It went down to partial. Do you remember every morning I'd go to, I, before work, I'd drop you off and then I'd go home or leave work. But you remember? Yeah, we won tickets to see new kids on the block on the way down. Girl, yeah, we did. Okay. So um, we're there and they, they said, we don't think um, a regular behavioral therapy is working for Brittany. Really? <laughs> so they suggested that I get her in this thing called DBT. Um, and, oh, okay. You mean there's something else out there? I didn't know, you know, and I was, I had never heard of, um, di di dialect, dialect behavior therapy. Thank you, Brittany. Um, 
And so we go, okay, delight, dialect, DBT, as well as say DBT, okay. Um, the only place we could go, it's, at that time, it was pretty scarce. And we had to drive to Cincinnati. So every, my mom moves back from um, Florida to Ohio and she's um, with Brittany. And thank God, because once a week down there for therapy. And then the other day, we, well, then I had to go back again to Cincinnati for the second day. And we did what was like a group therapy. And we did it with five children by parents and we're all in this room so the parent is learning the thing do you remember this Brittany I remember it very well and so we learned to um and as with the child do you remember okay so Brittany would be the first thing to do recognize where you're at emotionally like shit's fan inside me so let's how bad that shit is is it a one is it a two is it a ten like gauge for you remember that yep okay so now we know okay i'm at an eight so now we've we've got it enough so we can realize real how bad am i and as the parent how bad is she like so i'm learning to gauge her and then after we gauge her and she gauges where she's at like they give us the tools of what to do with it we never had that did they what did they did you learn that i mean i know you learned how to de-escalate yourself in some ways yeah so we had private sessions as a, as the kids and you guys had private sessions as the adults i don't know what you guys learned in your private sessions but we we come together and learn different how to utilize your coping skills because coping skills are not meant to work every time with every situation so they would teach us gauge where you're at and when you're at this level give me five different coping skills at an eight level so you're at an eight give me five coping skills that usually help you out when you're in crisis at an eight and then a couple weeks later, we would reevaluate our list. So we would go back through our list and we would say, okay, these three coping skills did not work at an eight. Okay, let's move them down. How, let's gauge how far we need to move them down on the list. And so we learned how to use them for different situations, which really, really helped. And then from there, after recognizing using our coping skills, then we learned something called mindfulness. And mindfulness is the biggest game changer. It seems so small, but it is the most important thing I ever learned. In any therapy, from any hospitalization, from any doctor, that was the biggest, most important thing I learned. Yep. Boy, that's when I learned meditation. Mm -hmm. And basically what mindfulness is, is, is something that takes 100% of your focus in your brain. So what is, you get down, you sit down in a puzzle and all of your focus is on that puzzle. What does the paper feel like? What does it feel like to move your pen to fix the puzzle? What are you learning from the puzzle? What, you know, all the things about the puzzle, you're using your brain power to solve the puzzle and you're 100% in the puzzle. Everything else is gone. There's no TV, there's no phones, there's no dogs, there's no, it is nothing but you and the puzzle. Right. And going from recognizing where you're at using your coping skills and 100% going into an activity, you know, or playing a video game, you can go and play your video game, your Call of Duty, you just go in there and you, you know, do all your stuff on Call of Duty. And there's nothing else around you at all. It's just you and Call of Duty, stuff right. like that. And going from those steps, 
really made a difference. Yes. Huge. So, so there, that was mindfulness. Did I interrupt you? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, you didn't. Okay. I can't tell because I'm hearing the echo still from the other room. Because <laughs> you're here. Yes. So um, one thing that we always heard about, that we learned belly breathing. Yes. Of course. Um, we learned that, you know, when you're younger. Because this was like, you were 17 when we started DBT. Um, and. We started DBT. We really, I, I really understood, it. and I was able to understand that your brain is going wired like this. Like I, I got the physical understanding. It's doing this. Like it's not making, it's not making headway. Like it's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not. I'm just like, hey, Alex. And so your brain's doing this. That's my. I'm the adult here. So then I'm explaining to people like when they would say "spare the rod, spare the child," screaming at, them, or trying to discipline during that moment is the because the brain's already doing. I don't want to do this. You know, I'm trying to get it down. So I now once we down and we're in a calm state, that somebody in mode. If you learn that in nursing school, there are teachable moments. You can't teach somebody during crisis, and just like if somebody just found cancer, you don't go in. There teach them how to um, to get them on cancer at that point. They've got a well, it's the same thing with mental illness. The brain is all over the place. It's a crisis at that point. The worst you can do to your child is to go in there and say, okay, you can do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Clean your room and pick up this and do this and do this. You can't do that. You got, you have to bring them down. And that was the best thing about DBT. And if the therapy is not working, which is your average everyday therapy, I highly recommend DBT therapy because they actually give you the skills of what to do. And I think it's the parents. Yes. Belly breathing is so important. Yes, it is. Um, she's here now, but she doesn't actually live with me. Sometimes she does like it just depends on the day, but Will still call me. No, no. I, I can't calm down. I can't, and, and I'll say, okay. And we start the process. I'll say, okay. I need to and sometimes I have to get Brittany, take a deep breath, hold it. All right. Now we're going to count it down. And, you know, and, 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 and we have to do that. And I'm sure I remember you doing that when I was director of nursing and I was walk, so I was talking it like what is she doing but that is what it gets you down and then once the brains calm down and then you're like thanks mom it, but it, you know and belly breathing is as lola said it's so, so important and people but we love dbt belly breathing two three four out two no i need you to take a deep breath right now i it in for five. Now I need you to hold it for six. No, no, two, because you would always try to like stop it back to hyperventilating, hyperventilating, you know, no, nope. in for two, or I mean, in for six, you know, <laughs> now you have to kind of get like, I don't say militant, but you become assertive, not aggressive. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing you do with your child when they are going through crisis mode and you. So that was a big, really big um, thing, parents' responsibility that I think we forget. And that people are always trying to how to raise their child when they have mental illness. And I think that's with any child. Every child struggles. 
discipline them in the middle of a crisis is the worst thing to do to that child. I wish I would have understood that during terrible twos and threes. If I would have whispered in your ear, it's okay. It's okay, we're gonna calm down. Instead of trying to tell you what to do with that during your um, tantrums, like I used to do. Yeah. Um, I wish I could figure that out then because I would have had this this uh, parenting thing. <laughs> yeah, and a big thing is do not, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, what were you saying before that? I was reminded me about how we um when like like when you oh I remember. Don't tell us to calm down. Yes. Because in that moment, it feels like we will never ever calm down. So you know how they always tell you, the guys, like, don't ever tell your woman to calm down. That's the worst thing you can do. No. The worst thing you can do is tell a mentally ill person when they're in crisis to calm down. It's dangerous. And I mean that's in serious. Like, that's, it really can be. It, since we were already at 100, we're at 1,000 now. So don't do it. Just don't take a minute and say, it's going to be okay. We're going to work through this together. So we don't feel alone because the worst thing is feeling alone. You know, it feels like you're already all alone. And when somebody comes up and tells you like, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. That right there is, and make it sincere. It really, really changes things. Because when you're in that in that spot, you feel like you're never going to calm down. It's never going to get better. Everything sucks. This is the end of the world. Like, I'm going to die, you know, even though it's you just spilled a glass of milk on the floor. It feels like that. It does. It feels like everything is ending. It's just let us know you're here and that we're validated. Because, yes, it might just be some spilt milk on the floor, but to us, that is the end of the world. It is it. It's over from there. You know, it just make us feel like it's okay. It's going to be okay. And let us know you're here for us. And let us be validated that our feelings are real. Yes. That I'm glad you brought that up. Because um, is it okay that I share what after um, the time apart that we had? A little bit. Yes. So with struggles, Brittany went through a period where she didn't even want to talk to me. She um, we weren't even talking during this period of time. And um, she moved in with her dad. Thank God it didn't last long, but she, this happened. And it was the, the hardest time of my entire life. So when I was going through that, I was, I was trying handle it because I did not handle obviously very well. Um, and for, this is at the time, I tell the story. <laughs> I mean, I tell the story of how I went to my because I was in grief. I really very much had a hard time dealing with not having Brittany. Um, went on for almost a whole I well, I thought she was me, um, but I think there was a lot more than just that. So we're not going to that. That's not important right now. But that put me into it. I really, really struggled with that. So I go. I went into this group therapy. I don't know on chat, but doctor said, why don't you take this time and go to nursing school, what I wanted to do for so long. So, sorry, my dog. So, um, wait, um, so I group thing uh, for grief for about three weeks um, when I was dealing with it. And um, 
I met a nurse and she kind of like, I guess. And as we were talking, she said that she had bipolar disorder. Now I hadn't with bipolar disorder. Um, that was an adult. So I, I was like, really wanted to learn from her because I wanted to make my relationship better. I wanted to understand my daughter because not only was I not just from not talking to her, but, uh, I wanted to, to help her. I knew that she wasn't going to not want her. Um, but I just, wanted, all I wanted to do was make her okay. One. We all, since the day she was born, I wanted her to live this great, right? So I'm talking to this lady and she's a, a brilliant nurse. She was like, and you cut off. Oh, okay, hold on. Am I black? No, you're just, your, your mic keeps going out. My mic does? Yeah. Is it now? You're doing better now. Okay. Okay. So I'm talking to this late this lady who is, who I have a lot of respect for. Um, I could tell she was brilliant, and she tells me she has bipolar disorder. And so I was asking questions because I wanted to understand my daughter better. And she said that she nation. Like, what is that like? What can I do to make it better for my daughter when she has a hallucination? You understand that the hallucination is very real to her, and that um, you are going to stay there with her and be there her and it's gonna be okay and I, she was the worst thing you can do is tell her it's not real and i'm like what that's up every every time she would have a or i would say it's okay baby girl it's not real and I, too but in about like you said you, I, you're not validating their feeling. You're not validating what's actually happening to them. And I even said it on our last, on my last live, um, Brittany wasn't on here, but I was saying we have to validate what they're going through is it's very real to them. I'm, I will, I, if you get anything from this live, validate the child's feelings mm -hmm. or if they're a child or an adult, but somebody suffering from it on well, a living priest, <laughs> um, suffering from mental illness, never ever tell them that it's not real because it's very real to them. Sorry, did I cut you off? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I think that's really important. Um, look what Lola said. If y'all have any questions for Brittany, we're pretty much or me, we're pretty much on open. So y'all can ask any questions that you want. Um, let's see. Uh, is saying, what do you want? What do you need? A good one as well. So Brittany, if, what should they say? Like if saying, what do you want? Or what do you need? Is that something they should say? Or is there something else? For me, it's, what can I do? What can I do for you? What can I do? Um, because what do you need and, and stuff like that can sometimes sound a little harsh. Like, what do you need? You know what I mean? Like, it can sound very harsh. It's coming off more as soft and as well, nonchalant helps too. Just very very soft, open arms, think Mother Teresa, <laughs> you know, very open, Keep be very open with your body language, because if you start to get defensive, we start to get defensive, don't come at us like this, you know, very soft, relaxed, and what can I do for you is a really, really good one. It's not threatening, 
It's very calm. You can't take that in a bad way. I mean, you, I don't think. But what, you know, it's a lot, it's more open sure. of, a, of a, you know, a question. Good to know. That's really good to know. Um, what's one thing that you wish I would do now to, um, for you? Uh, differently now that's a good question um <laughs> oh you know you can think of something probably but i don't want to be too harsh on camera oh you can be harsh baby i'm just kidding <laughs> um watch how you say things this is for everybody that i'm around and with you know everybody i know sometimes i'm very very sensitive to i'm hyper vigilant as well and i think that's probably for my ptsd but i can hear the slightest change that most people probably wouldn't even pick up on that when you were when people work things you work things a certain way i instantly get defensive and think that you hate me Aww. so like um I'm trying to think of an example. Um, uh, you know, like uh, I'm just having a normal conversation and you either get real excited and I'm like, oh, well, oh, what did I do? I'm sorry. Even though you were excited about something, just watch the wording and, and the how you say it. Like I get very, very sensitive. I mean, instantly, like when my best friend doesn't answer my text for 10 minutes. I instantly think he hates me. Aww. So like, you know, remind, remind me, let me know you don't hate me. That's also a good one. Cause I usually think people hate me for some reason, but you know, just watch how you say things. Gotcha. Like Mindfulness. I nothing, right. But take it as that. Uh, that I'm angry with you. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll just be mad that the TV is not working or something. And you're like, oh, and I instantly hear you from my room. And I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? I got to be quiet. I hunched down. I think that I did something wrong and I'm trying to be extra quiet. Or when you take a deep breath and I'm like, oh no, what did I do? I'm sorry. I didn't, am I talking too much? <laughs> yeah, I have a, a person that I feel that way with too. So now I'm like, so terrible that you feel that way about your mama. But I want you to tell me because that's communication. And that was one thing that you said that you struggle with is communication. And I'll struggle with communication. I really struggle with it in my um, romantic relationship. So yes, um, that's and, sweet. Yeah. So I get it. I do get that. Um, and I appreciate being open, honest with the chat because it's not easy to tell people like um, what's hard for you, what's not hard for you. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, one thing I really struggle with, um, and to share it with the world is so, okay. Um, you know, one thing that I wish that I would have about, um, and, and anybody in chat knows what the law of attraction is. Um, they, um, pretty mad because I'm running with the law of attraction. <laughs> Are you mad at me now? No, not yet. Not yet. The night, the night is young. Okay. So if I would have understood the law of attraction, um, during your adolescent years, I would have made a lot of choices. Because the law of attraction, if you don't know it, it, what you put out, you get. So I spent a lot of time um, right fighting. So like, I felt like I had to always be right. So whether that be with um, Brittany's dad or um, family or friends, teachers or the school, whatever i always like if i felt like something was wronged 
I would be oh I would want I'd I want to have an argument and why I thought I was right but letting it be if I could go back and just let it be and, and kept peace in our home without like having letting sweating the small stuff I guess um I think a lot easier and we're gonna brought uh better thing like just the whole law of attraction is like your inner being and like i think that that would have been i wish i would have known about it then um i guess i learned race our experience like like our experience was was really really our our experience was people always say oh, sorry you had to go through that i'm you're so strong and i don't like that i don't feel like like feel sorry for me because no just no i don't want you to feel sorry for us um i have learned to embrace our experience that's what i I embrace our experience and I cherish the clarity that it brought to me and made me who I am today. Mm. I would not be sitting here right now if it wasn't for our experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, I wish that it wouldn't have been that way, but it made me a strong, a strong woman. Um, not the same person I was 10 years ago. I wasn't the same person I was yesterday. But even just thinking about like a year ago, I'm a different person. Um, but I, I definitely wish that I would have understood those things. I guess age. I don't know. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But, <laughs> but like we didn't remember when we first learned meditation, mm -hmm. and that was when you were going through. Um, brain like had like quieted down for the first time mm -hmm. well the second time because you it did that too when you the first time i or the one time i took you to um uh what was it called with the needle acupuncture I, yes when i took you there that was incredible that was an incredible experience yes when i took you to acupuncture and you said oh, mama you thought you, you said it's the first time my brain's ever been quiet Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Because I didn't understand what it's like to have your brain go, 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 go all the time. Yeah, it never stops. My brain never stops. It's going right now. I'm thinking of like 20 different things right now. <sighs> yeah, that's that's hard for us. Oh, okay. So we, do you have anything else that you want to share before we get on to the, um, our West, the West Boys? Uh, not today. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go on to the West Brothers. You work with an ASD student. Ask, need, and want help. How can I help? Is sometimes too abstract for them. Okay. A little behavior. Tone is so important. Yes, it yes, is. Tone is very important. So it's been a little bit, um, but I fried my brand new computer is dead. So um, that's where all of our notes are. So now I'm going to go by um, memory, which is never good for me. Um, so it's Anybody in chat that is familiar with these babies? Because this one is close to my heart. This one, I don't know, Brittany, if you remember, but this is what I, I kept saying. Come here, come here. There's an update. update. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, I don't know if you saw my thumbnail, um, but the sweet, sweet babies. 
because I have a computer, I'm trying to do it on my computer, which I can't go to on StreamYard from. StreamYarding from my cell phone. So that's why um, it's not exactly what I wanted for tonight. I actually have considered not even doing the West Boys because I want to make it a very good, I want live to be amazing. That's what I was thinking too. I wonder if we should hold off today and come back so we can do this case justice because I, these boys need to be found. And because of our computer situation, I worry that we won't be able to get out what we need to get out. And I think they deserve better than that. Better than our computers. Would the cat say um, did live this week? Um, because of my computer situation, I am just concerned. I want to make sure that these boys get a really good live. Um, really important to me. They're, I can't get like any of their information from my computer and I can't go on StreamYard, their pictures, the parent interview, any of that stuff that I really want to, uh, would that be okay if I went on live um, on a different night, maybe Thursday? Um, bad because that was like the whole plan for tonight was to do this and um my sweet daughter ran all over town think trying to get a a, a plug because my my plug originally broke from the my brand new laptop and then after they got a plug it still didn't work the computer that i've got in june is fried so if you guys are okay with that i feel really bad but the West boys deserve, they deserve better, better than me telling you a story online because I want to share the parents interview, which is the, I'm sorry, not the parents, the parents that did whatever they did. Um, that's important. And I was out there, which can kind of tell you, the biological, I'll, I'll at least say this about the sweet boys. Their mother um, lost them in children's services, took them, but lost them. I believe one of them had a broken leg. So children's services got involved. Um, they shipped her son to the ER. Um, but it was because of abuse. It was actually. Uh, an issue. I don't know if he had a fall or something happened at daycare or something, but there was no happen. But she tested positive for marijuana. It was taken away. Not her kids. Two of them, the two boys. Um, and, but there were four other kids left in the house. Um, put in for care. And the the foster parent adopting them, and they were reported this past December twenty. It was time for their next um, meeting with CPS. Is my understanding, and see that's why I want to all my notes so I can give specifics. But supposedly they were wrapped and their three and four year olds were in the backyard and they went outside to check on them and they were there. So they called California City Police Department and they drove around the neighborhood. Okay, a three and four year old are on foot, first of all. And There's a lot. There's so much to it. But anyway, um, now they're in Bakersfield, California, then took over the investigation, I believe March 1st or something around there. And it's 
I'm not sure that they in move were ever in. But they were in California City. They may have never even made um, because the parents moved to California City, I believe, in December. And before that, they lived in Bakersfield, I believe. So I'm not sure if an adult has been seeing these children. So never even that they were reported from. Um, thank you, Nancy. And Nancy, you understand why I want to make sure I have all of the and I report it from on cell phone where I cannot give them the proper um, the proper reporting that they deserve because those boys were failed. They've never been taken away from their mother, in my opinion. And to be failed by you know, the state of California's um, children's services. And um, And I, mail, and I will do it just for their case. We will, we won't do, you can come live with me. Which is awesome. Um, because I know that this case is a very important as well. Um, and then I'll do it on StreamYard. So I'm going to have to get, um, another computer, I guess. So thank you guys coming. I know it was a long night. Oh my gosh, you've been on the, here for two hours, but <laughs> you are fabulous. My family, um, I'm blessed to have all of you there, all of you here, like love in love and light to all of you. And I'm glad that you were here, here, please. Um, I'll say testimony almost. Um, you know, I love you more than life. And I love you, Mama. <laughs> I'm